In this lecture, we're going to cover one last tool called ESLint. It's probably the tool that will have the most significant impact on the way we write code. It's crucial for almost any project. You may have heard of ESLint before. If not, let's go over what linting is in general. Linting is the process of reviewing and reporting your code for errors. It's mostly a code quality reviewer. As you may know, Node and the browser will take the time to point out any errors you have in your code during runtime. If we forget a parenthesis, then JavaScript will output that as a syntax error. We even have the ability to throw custom errors. However, sometimes you may have code that won't necessarily result in an error but can still pose a problem. You may have functions that run unexpectedly because of formatting issues. Another pain point is sharing code between developers where formatting settings may be different from editor to editor. Everyone has their own coding styles, but if you're on a team, it would be beneficial if everyone adhered to a standard. Linting can help by making sure you're formatting your code in a specific way. A proper linting tool will throw an error whenever you stray from the standards set by your team. Linting is a way to scan your code for errors and inconsistencies. The job of a linter is to examine your project files and point out issues. These can range from formatting issues to errors caused by an unknown identifier. There are various linting libraries available created by the community. The one we'll be using is ESLint. We're going to use this library because it is constantly updated and it works with the latest versions of JavaScript. It'll play along well with Webpack and Babel. You can find more information by visiting the ESLint website. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to this site. Before we get into using this in a project, let's check out the demo they provide. A demo link can be found in the navigation. On the left, we have an editor where we can input some JavaScript. To the right of the editor, we'll find error messages outputted by ESLint. The demonstration already has some code inputted. It's creating a variable called foo assigned to the value of bar. ESLint is telling us two things. It's telling us that foo is never used and that bar doesn't exist to begin with. The second error is the type of error JavaScript will throw. It's not something we're interested in seeing. We can fix this error by assigning the variable to a primitive value. We'll set it to the number 5. This will leave us with the first error. Technically, this is not an error, at least not in JavaScript size. It's perfectly valid to declare variables but never use them. However, it does make sense that it would be an error. Sometimes we'll create variables and functions we may never use in an application. Let's compare this with what the browser outputs. I'm going to copy this line. Then, I'll open up the console and paste it in. If I were to run this line, then Chrome will return an undefined value. This is because the console usually expects us to output something if we're using the console, but we're not doing that. We're declaring a variable. Despite that, this isn't an error. If it were, the text would be highlighted in red. To JavaScript, this is perfectly valid code. It's not something that should produce errors. This is what ESLint is for. It'll check for things like this. It can help us detect unused variables, functions, or objects. By telling us this variable isn't in use, we can either be free to remove it or use it. One of the reasons ESLint is so popular is that it can be customizable by adding or removing rules. On the bottom of the page, we can click the configuration box to view a list of rules. ESLint comes with a preset of rules we can use. We can even add custom rules if we wish. Let's try modifying some of the rules and settings. We'll change the ES version to the latest version. Scrolling further, we can even set the environment. 
This part is important because we're telling ESLint where our code will run. JavaScript is a general purpose language. It's not just used in the browser or node. Every environment provides a particular set of global variables. ESLint needs to be aware of this. We're going to set the environments to browser and node. We'll make one more adjustment before we move forward. In the editor, let's put the foo variable to good use. Since ESLint is configured to work in a browser environment, we can use the document object and write the variable to the page. We are now lint free. This is ESLint in a nutshell. It checks your code for any potential errors or inconsistencies you may have. It can even pick up on things that the browser would ignore. This can lead to better and more efficient code. Let's learn how to install ESLint in the next lecture.